Hey, what's going on, you beautiful people? My name is Tie Dye. I hope you guys had a pretty awesome day today. My name has been pretty awesome so far. So in today's video, what I want to do is talk about my second year of game development college. So for those of you who have been subscribed to me for quite a while, you'd know that around this time last year, I did the same thing. Um, except for that time, what I did was talk about my first impressions of game development college. So my first year was done and wrapped up, and I uh, kind of summarized it, gave my first initial thoughts. But now that my second year is complete, I'm a bit more grounded into the lifestyle and the reality of it. Uh, I wanted to do the same thing, just sort of like an updated version of that, go over some of the same points. I do have a list of notes in front of me here, um, and I hopefully want to tackle a lot of the same things I talked about last time, just with updated views, but I also want to talk about a lot of new stuff, and then of course there's going to be plenty of things that I uh, won't be able to go over, just because this video will be rather long anyway, so if you have any questions about anything related to Game Development College, make sure to ask them down in the comments. I'll try and be as active as I can there and answer as many questions as possible. Um, but anyways, I just want to say some things before we dive into it. This is going to be 100% revolving around my specific college. Every college is different. Every college, or if you're going to a university, university program, uh, alters by quite a bit. Some are more scammy, some are more code-based, some are, you know, all over the place. There's a wide spectrum of area um, where these programs do cover. It is pretty generic just to say game development. So one thing I want to make very, very clear is this is just based off of my experience, and my college mainly covers just the art side of things. So I'll be doing things such as modeling, texturing, rigging, uh, even some animation, um, Unreal Engine stuff like that, but we don't go too much into the coding or anything like that. It's more the design itself. So that's where I'm going to be sort of speaking from, just to clarify that right off the bat. And I also want to make sure that this is very, very clear that this wasn't the most traditional school year possible. Um, for those of you who live in Canada, you may have heard, but this year there's a huge um, strike in Ontario, which is where I'm from, where all the colleges in Ontario uh, actually had five weeks off in the middle of it. So my first semester actually had a five week strike in the middle of things and uh, kind of threw things off course a little bit. That being said, I ended up just sort of sacrificing Christmas break, March break and all of that. And I still had the same amount of school time. Things were just sort of moved around a little bit. So for the most part, things were the way they should be, but just wanted to make that that, uh, pretty clear that things weren't exactly the way they were supposed to be this year uh, even though I did go over all the content that I should have so uh, yeah let's sort of start talking about the college I'm gonna start breaking this up into two sections uh, the first section I do want to start talking primarily about just sort of the college experience itself um, just in general before I start diving into my personal life and my personal experiences with it just so that uh, for those of you who just happen to stumble across this video you sort of get the gist of things and then uh, for those of you who are more you know interested in my perspective they can stay around to the end and I'll start talking about that kind of stuff so just talking about game design college um, and just thinking about what I recommended or what I not recommended I probably wouldn't do either there's no way I could 100% recommend it to someone or sort of tell someone to not take it. It really does depend on the person. It's uh, it's a very interesting thing because I think it's a program that anyone can pass, but not everyone can get a job out of. In fact, very little will get a job out of. Um, it's a very weird system because for me personally, I don't think something like game design or anything art related should be taught in a traditional school way. And uh, for one of the main reasons is, is grading, for example. How do you even grade something like this or teach it properly? Um, with grading, um, if you start to think about it a little bit, uh, there's really two main ways that you could grade it. You could sort of design your grades to be in a system where I'm going to grade this person based on this is where they should be at this level. For example, if you're in first year, I'm going to grade you on my expectations for someone who's only been doing this kind of content for one year. Or you could grade them in a way where it's like, I'm going to grade you based on this is the industry level. And if you grade the person based on the first thing where it's like, this is just, you know, how good you should be in first year, that's um, it's kind of misleading because say you get a 90%, like realistically, that's not going to get you anywhere. 90% is like, wow, your confidence is really high. You're going to think you're in a good position. But realistically, it's, it's really not that good. But then if you do the other grading way where you're grading based on how that would be like in an actual industry environment, everyone is just going to get terrible, terrible grades. So grades really aren't a reliable source. The only thing that they really do is just sort of explain if you're on the right track more or less. Like nobody in my program really looks at grades as anything too, too serious. It's just if they're really bad, it means you need to pick things up. And if they're really good, it means you're on the right track. Like plenty of people get 100% and stuff. And uh, in my opinion, you should never be getting 100% on anything that's art related. So that's a little bit weird to me. Um, and just teaching in general is like a lot of the stuff is more or less just repetition and practice. Like when it comes to modeling, which is my uh, specialty in my area, um, for me personally, it's like, yeah, you can teach techniques and stuff like that. 
but I can guarantee every single time you uh, make a different prop, there's going to be something that you sort of have to teach yourself uh, a new technique for, and that way you're just going to go online and figure it out. Like obviously, introduction classes are super, super helpful, and like going over different tools and classes are really, really useful as well. But I can't tell you how many times I, I was doing a personal project, and I'm like, oh, I'm just going to look up how to do this. Like one example was um, light map resolutions. I was having some issues with that in the Unreal Engine, so I looked that up. I figured it all out, and then like three weeks later in class, we cover it, and I'm like. Well, I already did this almost a month ago because I just sort of had to figure it out. Like everything you need to know for this specific field is already out there. So going to school is kind of, it, if you're going to school just for the information, I would highly, highly recommend not doing so. There is sources everywhere. Go on Polycount, go on other forums. There's there's people who will just help you out on ArtStation if you leave a comment. Like there are so many sources out there. Leave a comment in my videos if you need specific help with something um, because there is truly information for everything you need out there already. So um, just as far as that goes, college is interesting and in how they're really going to train you. Um, I think they do a pretty good job overall, but a lot of the times you find yourself just doing work because you're uh, pretty much supposed to be self-teaching yourself just as much. Because in this industry, right, you're expected once you do go out there and you do get a job to always be updating your library of knowledge anyways. Um, so it's kind of a weird balancing act, right? Like you go to school and you're paying all this money, so you're expected to be taught it all, but then the industry sort of really wants people who are self-teaching themselves. So you end up self-teaching yourself and then you'll be ahead in school and then you'll be like, why am I even paying for this if I'm just teaching myself? Obviously there's plenty of things that I've learned in school that um, I didn't learn on my own, uh, but I'd say by far the majority of the stuff that I do know, I have uh, self-taught myself through just forums and online videos and stuff like that. So the information is out there. You do not need to go to school for that. So um, what do you need to go to school for? Um, this is what I talked about in my previous version of this video, and it's mainly for one resources, like you're gonna have all the equipment that you need, um, every single program, all of that, full licenses, all the hardware that you need, that's gonna be really, really good. You're gonna have professors that are actually really good at their job, they're gonna be able to critique you. You're gonna have a learning environment where you're surrounded by people who wanna do similar things, which is very, very powerful. So, you know, you can um, just go and bounce ideas off of people, and uh, it's really, really neat that way. So it's more or less just sort of being in that environment because, you know, any other way you're not really going to be taken that seriously if you just take three or four years off of uh, working or school just to start sort of working on your portfolio. This is just kind of a way to um, surround yourself in an environment where you can sort of learn uh, as fast as you possibly can and you're just sort of, you know, expected to do so. So um, that's why I would recommend it if you need the hardware, if you want the community, if you want the professors and all that kind of support. Uh, it's really, really good for that. So um, what I want to do is kind of go back to the point where I said anyone can pass this kind of program, but not anybody can get a job. Um, to sort of get the most out of this style of schooling, whether it's uh, for animation or game design, or I would say even anything art related, you need to be just like super, super driven. You need to be incredibly self uh, motivated because essentially anybody can go through it, but um, it's three years. You can get a lot done in three years. And like I said, a lot of people just sort of go through this and coast through the program. And uh, when they get to their end, their work really isn't that good and they don't find any jobs. So if you want the opportunities, not only do you have to be the best in your class, you have to be the best out of all the cities around you if you want to get hired by these studios and if you don't have any studios around you you have to be incredibly good to stand out even further um, it's an incredibly incredibly competitive industry so um, maximizing your experience is an absolute must like it, it kind of has to become a lifestyle for you it really does it has to be something where you go to school you spend as much time as you can learning that bouncing ideas off of people go home and just work on it uh, pretty much 24 seven. That's what I'm doing right now. That's kind of how you have to do it. When I look at all the most successful people who have graduated from my program, that is the only way that you can handle it. Uh, for me personally, I find that a bit easier than some other people because I know that that isn't the ideal thing to do for a lot of people in their situation. For me personally, it's okay because I moved to a different city. Um, I really don't know a lot of people here. The only thing that I really do that well is, um, I go to school, I uh, do the, pro uh, the projects, I go home, I work on the projects, like, I don't have any distractions. I live in a city where, yes, I'm close to Toronto, I could go there and have a lot of fun, but there isn't a lot to do within walking distance or within busing distance, so I really don't have any excuse to not do my work. I'm in an area where the only real thing I can do is my schoolwork and my personal work and my portfolio and stuff like that, 
And uh, on top of that, I know that if I continue to do this for one more year, then I'll essentially be insured a pretty good job. So um, that's why I'm doing that. But you really do have to understand that you have to sort of make this your main lifestyle focus. Because if you're not spending as much time as you possibly can on this kind of stuff, someone else will and they'll pass you. And that's why I think moving out for something like this is incredibly important. If I was staying at home right now where I had all my friends around me, um, I would probably get way more distracted. I'd go out more and my actual quality of work would go down. So if you are really serious, about this you might want to consider putting yourself in an environment where working is the number one thing that you are going to be doing so to further emphasize this point, what I want to do is bring up two examples right now. So these are two graduates from my program from a couple years back. They graduated from the exact same year and they have the exact same teachers, the exact same education, all of that stuff, but their quality of work is greatly, greatly different. And the reason I want to show this is just to further explain that it is not the college itself that is sort of, you know, making the artist be as best as they can. It is just the college that is giving them the tools to sort of give them the potential to be the best they can. Uh, in order to be the best you that you can, and from a game development program such as the one that I'm in, you have to be very, very self-disciplined, very motivated, eager to learn, you know, going out of your way to find all of this information every single day because one of these uh, reels that I'm showing you right now is phenomenal and really, really good, while the other one is not gonna lie, looks like someone who's just in first year or even like a high school student um, just sort of threw this together. And um, Honestly, that's the thing. I've seen a lot of high school students that have incredible work that is better than some of the people graduating just because they are more determined and more motivated. You cannot expect to go into any of these programs and just because you pass means you're going to get a job in the industry. Now, for a lot of people, that seems a little unfair because with a lot of other programs, I'm not saying that you're guaranteed to get a job if you finish it, but a lot of programs out there sort of they're they're more like they they don't really hold your hand but once you get through it and you pass it that's kind of that then you're sort of qualified for the job but with this stuff it's all about how well you can figure things out on your own, how well you can sort of apply the knowledge you're given and, and use it in a creative way to sort of find a solution to an issue. So essentially what I'm trying to say is the college will help you, but you have to do everything on your own. It's all about your self-discipline and like I said, making this a, a lifestyle. It is full of lots of work, um, which isn't really for everyone. If you're someone who's sort of like given two weeks to do an assignment and you start it like three days before to do, this is definitely not the kind of work that you should be doing. If you're the type of person who is given two weeks to do something and you're like, I'm going to think of the best way to sort of like handle this two week assignment, then uh, this is definitely your style. You have to be very self-disciplined and it's something you can learn. I would say in first year, you'll start to sort of figure it out. But by the time things get a bit more serious, you should really be on top of things, um, especially for me and my program. By the time I get to third year, it's more or less just make three awesome demo reel pieces and we'll show it to a bunch of industry professionals. Uh, there's really no major structure other than the one that you make for yourself and that's just kind of how it's going to be once you go out there. So if you can't handle that in school, um, it's just sort of like a, a training ground for what it's going to be like when you actually go out there to school or out there to work rather. Now with that being said, there is a ton of work to do, but not all of it is really applicable to what you want. Now for me personally, the main areas that I'm really interested in is modeling, texturing, rendering, lighting, that kind of stuff. I like making environments, I like putting stuff together in a game engine and I'm making my own little diorama or my own little world. Um, but that being said, a lot of my week is spent doing things such as animation and a lot of my time is spent doing things such as illustration. And these are things I don't wanna do. And I find myself a lot of the time, you know, when I'm doing an illustration, assignment that's going to take me like seven hours or something like I could be spending this seven hours working on a model that I want to do or you know sort of helping on my portfolio a bit more I don't I don't think I'm ever gonna add animation to my portfolio for any reason so why am I doing it um, and and that being said like there are a lot of stuff that you're not gonna really want to add to your workload but I think it's important to try your best in every area. You're never gonna be able to go 100% in all of your courses. Like I had eight courses a semester, plus I did a huge Ubisoft competition on top of things. Like you are too busy to go 100% on any of your school projects. But um, that being said, you should still at least try it everything. Like I'm not an illustrator by any means, but I like to learn illustration because it can sort of help me with design, help me with composition and stuff like that. So I'd recommend always staying on top of that kind of stuff and always at least trying your best with the limited time that you have given for something like that. So that was kind of how school is in general. Like I said, as, as long as you're a really self-disciplined person who thinks you can do this kind of stuff on your own, this is definitely gonna be uh, right up your alley. You know, it's uh, just sort of there to give you the opportunities, but you have to do most of the work yourself. And once again, this is mainly just 
catering towards my school. I'm sure there's a lot of schools out there that sort of help you a lot more and guide you a lot more. But um, anything art related, I find it hard to believe that any school is going to really show you everything you need to know because it really comes down to your own creative styles and your own problem solving abilities. So um, overall though, I think for me personally, I think it was a good idea. I had plenty of times when I had my doubts about it because I felt like a lot of the times I was just doing work that wasn't helping my portfolio or I was cramming an illustration class, like I said, just because I wanted to spend more time on a model later on, which is incredibly annoying when you know you're spending the majority of your time on something that you're really never going to show anyone and as soon as you hand it in you're just going to delete it off your hard drive but that's also very very valuable in its own way um, and what I mean by that is just sort of the self-discipline and the time management like I said I had eight classes and a huge Ubisoft competition to do on top of that and uh, on top of that um, I even had like normal life things to do. Last year I was lucky I lived in a residence where I had a meal plan, I had uh, you know, sort of all this stuff sort of figured out for me, but this year I had to like, you know, bust down to the store to buy groceries, you know, iron my clothes, go down to the laundry room, pick up soap, uh, like just, just stuff like that, like actually shopping and being an adult adult. So throwing all of that in there, like you sort of, you have to stay on top of things. You have to be going to school every single day. You have to be doing your homework full time. Like I would wake up, do homework, go to school, come home, do homework, do chores, and then I would go home, or, or go to bed rather. Like it's a non-stop thing, it's you have to keep going, keep going. And the only way I could possibly manage to put everything in my entire day is if I was very, very strict with my time and school, especially school like this, certainly helps you with it because it's the only way you can actually survive this kind of stuff is if you are incredibly strict on your time. And as I mentioned in my previous videos, when I was doing that whole Ubisoft competition, that was a four month competition um, and on top of that, I had my eight classes, like I said, during that time, I didn't play video games once. Like, I had zero time to just sort of, like, sit back and play some League of Legends, or I still have Mario Odyssey just sitting there that I haven't touched since Christmas. And, uh, you know, it's like, finally, now that I'm done, I can go play those games. But it is all about just making sure you learn this time management. And, and even though I don't agree with a lot of the stuff that the uh, colleges do, like, these kind of life lessons are stuff that will... Will help me out forever like i will always be able to sort of know how to manage my time now especially when it's like an overwhelmingly large amount of work like that ubisoft competition was essentially um it was us being given four months to make our greatest piece yet and uh, it's like how do you even start that how do you even break that down how do you how do you handle the fact that i could work 20 hours in one day on something and on only like dent it the smallest amount and just wake up the next day working in full time only make the smallest little chunk of work uh, uh, finally completed and stuff like that. It's like how do you wrap your head around that while also having to you know cook your own dinner for the week as well as having to go to class every single day. It is uh, you know just a ridiculous amount of stuff to do so that is an incredible life lesson and obviously you can learn that in different ways you don't really have to go to school to do that but uh, it certainly did help especially since I'm living on my own and I have to figure it all out. So self-discipline, definitely super important and definitely one of the things I learned a lot about. Um, connections is also huge. Um, essentially, get on the good side of your profs, man. Like, like these people will help you out. I was actually able to go down to a studio in downtown Toronto, an animation studio, and I talked to those people just because I was just, you know, chatting up with my prof and he invited me to go along with him one day. So connections are a huge huge thing about the school like that that's one of the main things is like if you do go to game development college or animation college or anything like that the opportunity of you getting a job is much much higher than if you were to just stick around at home just because you know the people um, who have connections in the industry if you are confident talking to people online and just calling people up and trying to find connections in another way you can probably still do it I mean people do it all the time but uh, it's just a lot easier if you go to school for this kind of stuff because the opportunities are gonna be right there in front of you I actually got really really lucky and a, and a huge boost of confidence happened earlier this year because I've been working on this stuff really hard over the summer and I'm the kind of person who if I'm not working on something for like two or three days, I feel really guilty. Like I'm always working on a project, whether it be for school or a personal project. And um, I find that school really boosted my confidence quite a bit as well through these connections because uh, one of the things that actually happened earlier this year was I applied for an internship just over the summer and I got a call from the studio. It was a rather large studio in Canada, um, one of the biggest animation studios in the country. And uh, one of the cool things that happened was is they called me and I just wanted an internship and they called me and wanted to interview me for a full-time job, which was crazy because that's what I wanted to do. This was actually one of the studios I really had my eye on, but I sadly had to turn it down because I'm still in school. I told them I'd reapply, but and, um, just the fact that they would even want to interview me was super super humbling and even like yesterday I posted a bunch of stuff on ArtStation I was talking to some people and I was offered some contract work so 
just sort of putting yourself in an environment like school where you're always working on stuff, you're always gonna have opportunities to sort of make connections and these connections are gonna eventually lead to something like this. Like I'm starting to get to this position where things are kind of lining up. Like I could see myself having a job in the industry next year when I graduate because of all the connections I've made and the confidence that I've really gained through school and the self-discipline that I've really, really made. So. Like I said, I don't agree with everything that the school and uh, colleges do with this kind of stuff. I think they make you do a lot of unnecessary work, but that really does sort of turn around with helping you to be a bit more self-disciplined, have a bit more time management. But uh, overall, I think it's pretty good. This year definitely didn't go the way that it should have been with the whole strike situation. Things got flipped around. I had zero breaks. I didn't even have a Christmas break. I had four days off for Christmas, and that was the only break I had for the entire year. So I'm looking forward to the summer vacation, even though I'm working full time, like 10 hours a day. But uh, it's going to be a nice change of pace for sure. The only advice I would have is if you are the type of person who's self-disciplined and think you can find connections on your own, just you don't really need to go to school for this stuff. Maybe get an education in another field because having other fields of education is also incredibly beneficial. They don't really care if you went to game design uh, school or animation school or anything like that. Um, if you can do the work, you can do the work, and that's all that really matters. If you are someone who tends to leave work to the last minute, do not go to game development school simply because it's really not going to help you but if you think it's going to make you more of a self-disciplined person definitely go for it for a lot of people it just sort of does the opposite but if you think this is sort of like the the thing that's going to convince you to work every single day that's the only time i'd really recommend it um and like i said at the very start of this video it depends on every single individual person use the opportunities that you have in front of you if you think this is something that's going to help you out go for it and uh yeah that's overall my thoughts on all of it i will once again bring you guys a video like this next year once i graduate and uh, hopefully it'll be coming from the position of me getting a job. That's the uh, that's the dream right there. But anyways, guys, if you have any more questions about this, that's just my general thoughts. But I'll uh, leave some in the comments down below. I'd love to talk a bit more about this down there. And look, maybe uh, someone else asked a question that you want to ask already. And uh, I'm sure there's plenty of answers down there. So once again, guys, um, this is probably the end of the video. So thank you all for watching. Once again, my name has been Tidey. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. And I will catch you in the next one. See ya.